Hello everyone, welcome back to Director's Cut. My name is Jan Plbauer and I hope you are enjoying this beautiful summer. We certainly are, but we are also very busy. So today I would like to talk about Lynx, which is our new system replacing the large value transfer system, LVTS. And the LVTS is a very important system because uh, it's something I call a backbone of our financial infrastructure. Uh, it's processing wire payments, uh, high value payments, uh, settling other infrastructures. Just to give you a sense, we have around 3 million Canadian dollars going through the system every second. So uh, the replacement is definitely not a small job, and I'm happy to have uh, Mike Hogginson here with me. And uh, Mike is actually leading the Lynx pillar um, to replace LVTS. Hi, Mike. Hi, Ann. So what's the, what's the latest and greatest on Lynx? Well, we've been busy, very busy over the last few months. Um, coming out of the end of last year when we uh, decided obviously we needed to replace our uh, high value system and we've come out with the, the branding on Lynx, we started the procurement process earlier this year and we started looking at requirements and defining what is it that we want the solution to deliver to us. And uh, we went out and selected uh, three suppliers. We invited them to come uh, as part of our process that we define competitive dialogue as our procurement process. And we've been working very closely with them uh, and with the member financial institutions over the course of the, of the last eight months. So any learnings or what surprised you? Uh, some really interesting stuff. I think it's part and parcel of the way we've designed the competitive dialogue process. It's kind of an iterative and agile procurement process where we're able to bring the suppliers in fairly early in the process and really learn from their experience, uh, leverage uh, their expertise uh, to help us define what some of those requirements would be for links. Uh, and look, thinking about things like implementation strategies, uh, adoption of 2022, um, and that's really helped to inform and, and help us shape the requirements as we've moved through this process. And I know LVTS is a bit unique uh, comparing to other countries, and uh, we are proud of uh, having LVTS, but uh, I assume as we are looking into existing products and leveraging what's already on the market, uh, the intention is to maybe move away from some of this uniqueness and uh, become more aligned with, uh, with the other jurisdictions. Yeah, that's true. The market has really evolved when we think about when LVTS was put in in 1999. Um, there weren't as many suppliers, there weren't as many solutions available to us. And they, the products and solutions have really matured uh, over the years. And obviously a number of central banks, are, our system operators are looking at replacing their high value system. Um, and we're gonna be able to benefit from that because as the product has matured, they've introduced new capabilities, new functionalities. And those are really the types of things that we're looking to, to leverage and build upon because there will be some pieces that we're gonna need that will still uh, be custom elements. Uh, to uh, to support what we uh, what we require, uh, but we're going to be able to leverage, I think, quite a bit of uh, of what's been put in place in, in other jurisdictions because obviously there's a lot of um, consistency uh, in terms of the processing of high value payments from from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So you mentioned that there are other countries which are thinking about replacing or modernizing their RTGS infrastructure. I know you are in touch with, uh, with the UK, Europe, Japan, uh, and even Fed. What are kind of the key topics? Are we talking and thinking about the same things, or what are the emerging themes? Yeah, there's definitely a number of themes that are, uh, are emerging that we're looking at. Um, that really apply across jurisdictions. Um, the application and introduction of new standards, when we think about ISO 2022, um, that's really a, a key piece. Uh, there's a lot, obviously, from a, an interop interoperability perspective on the global markets with wire payments. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're uh, moving in lockstep with other jurisdictions. Um, thinking about how we transition from old systems to new systems, there's definitely some, some learnings uh, there. And thinking about uh, different ways around which we can address uh, and meet the regulatory standards and requirements. Thinking about resiliency, um, security, uh, those are obviously uh, first and foremost for any high value system because it really is the, the foundation, it's the heart of the, uh, of the economy in, in those jurisdictions. Uh, and then there's a couple other things we're thinking about, you know, in terms of expanded access and, and looking at expanding hours of operation. Um, and, and those are somewhat unique to each jurisdiction, but I think there's definitely learnings and, and discussions that we need to have uh, with our colleagues. 
Thank you. So keep up the great work with the team. And uh, for you, if you have any comments, feedback, input, uh, as always, please don't hesitate to reach out. And uh, take care for now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Prowler at night? Hi. Okay. <laughs> Shake it out, man. Shake it out. Soften up. Soften up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything from here. Okay. Except for that big white scene on your face. <laughs> <laughs>